Welcome to another National Rehabilitation Awareness Week video where we are meeting the team across the state in the Mary Free Bed system. We are taking a second to talk about speech language pathology, and we have one of our team here at the Grand Rapids campus, Kate Armstrong, joining us in the interview. Kate, uh, welcome to the, the interview and excited to be celebrating National Rehab Week with you. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> So, Kate, just tell me a little bit about yourself, um, what programs you're here, how long you've been working at Mary Free Bed, and a little bit more about your, your position. Sure. So I've been at Mary Free Bed for about 10 years. I started off as the primary pediatric inpatient speech language pathologist, um, helped to grow some of our disordered levels of consciousness programs, our pediatric feeding program. And within the last two years, I kind of took over the role of team leader for the inpatient speech department. Yeah. And so you've you've definitely seen us grow. So 10 years, that puts us before the West edition, right? Yeah. Before we you, had our own unit. <laughs> I, I interrupted you, I apologize. Um, how did you get into rehab? Um, so... I've always been pretty nerdy about how the human body works and just like wanting to understand it. And speech pathology was the perfect mix of understanding science and how the body heals, but having that like direct human impact where you are working with another person to help them heal. So I, when I was younger, my grandpa was actually an amputee patient here in patient at Mary Free Bed, like probably must have been 30 years ago if I'm aging myself. And I remember coming to his outpatient PT appointments. And that was kind of like always in the back of my mind, like what a cool place, like as a child to see, okay, grandpa's hurt, but these people are going to be intentionally putting their work in to help him recover. Um, and then the more I kind of investigated the field in college, the more like the greater understanding of there's multiple layers to the rehabilitation process and the rehabilitation team and speech pathology really clicked with me when I was exposed to it at Kelvin. So here I am. <laughs> I'm a Kelvin grad as well. So I've never seen a lot of the speech language pathologists. They were right down the hallway um, from the building we were in at that time. Um, so stepping back to We've been educating about rehabilitation, but your view as a speech language pathologist, how would you define rehabilitation? When I think about rehabilitation, I think about the healing process in general that a human being would go through following a traumatic event to their brain or body. And so for me, it's utilizing the expertise of an interdisciplinary team from every perspective. So we have the physical, we have the sensory, the cognitive, we have the brain body connection, we have the medical intervention. So we're thinking PT, OT, nursing, respiratory, physicians, everyone behind the scenes, utilizing our specific skill sets to help guide that healing process with what we know is best for the person specifically and also grabbing on to what we know that evidence tells us will be beneficial with this specific event to create a holistic plan of care so that the person can restore their function and life participation in the best way possible. That's a, a good definition of it. I appreciate you, that, that thoughtful, thoughtful answer. Uh, and here's another one for you. I always joke that like speech language pathology is probably like the worst marketed <laughs> discipline because of the name. Yeah. Like, how would you even begin to, to define that and explain that to someone? So like if I'm, hey, explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader or something, how would you describe that? Yeah. So like it sometimes is pretty concrete when you come to the rehab hospital, people are like, okay, I'm here for rehab. And we think of physical therapy first, because I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to move my body, but it's kind of easier to wrap your mind around, especially as like a child, if you say, okay, Miss Kate's going to help with all parts of your body from here up. So we're thinking the respiratory system, the way the voice moves to your vocal cords, your voice box, the way that your muscles for speech and swallowing work together, and then all of your thinking skills. So you can go back to school, so you can communicate, so you can hang out with your friends and that sort of thing. And you said it earlier too, that you work on the um, the pediatric floor too. So you're seeing adults and kids within speech. I mean, how do you even begin to like 
prepare like your one minute you're working with an adult for your session then you got to walk down the hall and jump into with a kid like do you have to change things in your mind as you like are doing that how does how do you work that that, that caseload I definitely would say I'm primarily pediatrics. That's where my heart is. I always say like talking to grownups is harder for me. <laughs> um, but at the bottom line is it's patient centered first. So we go in, we want to understand the human being and who they are and what their goals are and what their life looks like. And you kind of would adapt your treatment based on that. So, you know, I might be working with an adult with a brain injury, a mild TBI, who I know is going back to be a chef. So I might pair up with OT thinking, okay, we need cognition and sequencing while we're like in a kitchen cooking. And that's going to be my goals for that patient. And then I'm kind of walking down the hall, maybe after lunch, going into uh, infant feeding evaluation. I know the primary goals for that baby right now is they want to eat and family is a big part of goal setting too. Their priority is we want to get this NG tube out of their nose, this feeding tube. We want to maybe prevent long-term feeding tubes. So as long as you have the patient, their goals, their family's goals in the forefront of your thinking, it's easy to kind of make those code switches throughout the day. <laughs> How often do you collaborate with the, uh, the respiratory team? It sounds like, especially because our peds facility, our PEDS program is right next door to IMRU, our intensive mm -hmm. medical rehab unit. How much are you collaborating with, with the respiratory therapy team? Every day. All day long, we have an amazing, amazing respiratory team here. So for example, I'm consistently seeing our patients for rehab goals, right? So a rehab goal might be together, speech and respiratory. We really want to eventually get a trach out of a patient who can kind of tolerate that. So day to day, I'm monitoring specific changes and let's say a little bit of a regression happens. Most of the time between our two perspectives in problem solving with the family, we can figure things out. They're directly involved with all of our inpatient speech goals and we just work really, really well together. <laughs> and I feel like it's shown with how successful our, our pediatric patients are here by the time of discharge. <laughs> And so you've been here at Mary Free Bed for 10 years. You've, you've seen a lot of growth. You've seen the West Edition come up. And uh, now we're also, I didn't prep you about this question, but I want to ask it. Um, we are now going to be building a new children's hospital across the street. So it's a collaboration with Cora Health, but it's going to be a new facility all for kids. How is like a new building like that going to help you in the team uh, work with patients and, and work with even more patients than you've been seeing before? It's going to be a phenomenal opportunity for our community to meet needs that have not been met thus far. So, for example, we get we get really backed up with outpatient feeding programs for restricted feeders, specifically um, birth to three speech and language populations might not be as well serviced as they potentially could be. So my hope is we're partnering with DeVos where we have these amazing brains coming together with outpatient programs and inpatient programs throughout the entire trajectory of a healing process. And so we're all going to be together in one building and like what an amazing opportunity to be a team with each stage of the healing process. So you just are so passionate about rehab and passionate about our patients. Um, do you have any like recent success stories of kids or adults that you worked with that you've really connected with and have really like filled your bucket? Yeah, I feel like what I can specifically hone in on right now is we have we're starting like to work with more patients who are we'll just say they're coming out of a coma, so they have a severe brain injury where technically we would call them what's referred to as a disordered level of consciousness. They're not completely awake and conscious and like interacting um, or showing intent of an interaction quite yet. But we have had such success getting those pediatric patients over to our setting earlier on so we can go in, work their sensory system as a whole. And I, I mean we because we oftentimes will co-treat this population because what I'm doing and what PT is doing, what respiratory is doing, what OT is doing is all going to be the goal of getting them into consciousness, having these sleep-wake cycles first. 
Um, and I have seen incredible progress with that emerging program. Um, one specific example would be a patient who was here for five months. Um, and the physical therapist was noticing more uh, movement changes and improvements than I was with, you know, being aware of their surroundings or interacting with objects. And we really, as a team, utilized each other's observations and leaned on each other when there were moments of frustration where, like, maybe the family's not feeling like there's enough gains with thinking specifically. And let's flash forward to now. That was probably five years ago. He is walking, talking, eating, drinking, working, like one of the most incredible stories that I've ever been able to experience, like hands-on the capabilities of the healing process. That, that is really cool. And it just, I mean, it probably just really makes you feel so like fulfilled in like all that hard work that you've done, like pays off to follow up and see those patients from as they've, they've gone home and gone back to their lives. Um, I mean, that alone should be enough sell for this, but like, what would you say if you wanted to, someone was thinking about going into healthcare and they just didn't know what field or what area, why should they go into, into rehab or even just why should they go into speech language pathology? And like, for my experience, I know I needed healthcare because my brain works in a way of, I want to analyze and I want to provide solutions mm -hmm. and I want to be able to diagnose and treat, but rehab is diagnosing. Yes, but it's treating because of the capabilities of another human being able to kind of like speak to another person with our trainings, through our touch, through our skill set. So myself as a speech language pathologist, I'm not utilizing any kind of medication to help someone heal, but I'm utilizing what my body and my brain is capable of to then pour into them and help restore their function. So I think like that to me is like the biggest market, like where else are you directly impacting someone's life, someone's healing experience and helping restore as much function before they go back to the real world, essentially outside. Of <laughs> Well, Kate, I want to thank you so much for, for chatting with me uh, today, talking about speech language pathology, working in pediatrics, and um, working here at the hospital. Uh, we've been celebrating all week for National Rehabilitation Week. Um, you know, and last question, like, why should we be celebrating this field? Why should we be celebrating our team? I feel like we've got such a great, you know, culture here at Mary Freebed, and you've been here for 10 years, I've been here for five, and I just really enjoy this, this place. What would you say about Mary Free Bed and just in general about rehabilitation? I think rehab, like the people that serve in rehab, we do feel like we're serving. We're serving other humans where we're almost like a family unit because you you have to be. We need to be like close and well communicating in order to pour into these other people to help them progress. Celebrating rehab to me is celebrating like the greater knowledge that we're coming into in our fields um, to help individuals who've suffered these traumatic events such as brain injury or stroke or a cardiac event and helping them regain as much function as possible. And a, a big part of that is, is your team and how they work together and how they mesh together. And yeah, it's just an incredible thing to be celebrating. <laughs> And we we're looking at pictures here of uh, just the week we've had. We had a barbecue. We've had some fun activities, uh, different costumes. Kate, did you dress up anything for any of the Spirit Week this week? I did wear a Morgan Wallen shirt for Country Western Day. I left the cowboy boots at home, but <laughs> yeah, probably easier to treat without yeah, cowboy boots. Yeah, it's it's tricky to treat in costume, but stuff. And our Mary Free Bed Day too. We're in the Mary Free Bed gear, so awesome. Well, uh, Kate, I want to thank you so much for. Um, spending time chatting with us uh, today. This has been another Get to Meet the Team on the National Rehabilitation Awareness Week. We've been talking with Kate Armstrong, a speech language pathologist from the Grand Rapids campus of Mary Freebed. It's been a great week talking to all kinds of staff members across the system from Munson up in Traverse City area and uh, Manistee and uh, all over northern Michigan and to Saginaw, on the east side, the Great Bay region, talking with some of the team over there. 
Uh, go back through your social feed, check out some videos, get to know some more of the team. Thank you so much for watching, and it's been fun celebrating National Rehabilitation Awareness Week.